You see those motocross bikes right there, Zach? I want to buy those, but Kelsey told me no. I say yes. I say we need to buy those. Because you never know. I think you should. Now I see whose fault it is. It's your fault. The man behind the camera. Yeah, buy it, Dennis. Buy it. Good morning, Zach. Good morning. It's early 30. Look at the sun's just coming up. So we got this lead Thursday afternoon, and today is Tuesday. I got a call a 12-cylinder Ferrari, which always gets my attention. We've been going back and forth on the phone, several people involved, lawyers, attorneys, family members, on and on and on. This car's been parked since 1982. Now, whenever you get the chance to pick up a vintage 12-cylinder Ferrari, they said this has got to be done quickly. I'm going as fast as I can. And rumor has it, Kelsey's going to join us. So grab your cup of joe and let's go get a killer Ferrari. Lafayette, Louisiana. It's about 11 in the morning. Alex beat us here. Sure did. did. What time did you leave? Uh, three. Three? <laughs> wow. Thought I got up early. Same. So Alex here's was. the plan. Whenever we get a lead on a 12 cylinder Ferrari, we get on as quick as we can. Oh, yeah. This lead came in on Thursday. The deal is not completely done yet. Cool. I still have to get in there and get permission to film as well. But I've been keeping this deal together as well as I can since Thursday. We're now here. We're gonna go to the buy. I'm gonna go in and talk to the people, Kelsey and I are. See how close we can get to get the deal done and hopefully get permission for Alex to come in and load it and Zach to film it. Wish us luck. So we just got to the buy location and cleared with the current owner of the car that he's cool with us filming filming the buy and digging the car out and he's actually Mr. Winkler is his name he's he's going to tell us the story of how he bought the car and why it's sitting here and where it came from. Alex is Mr. Winkler the owner of the Ferrari. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. This is Joe Aquila. Nice to meet you. He's the finder. <laughs> All right and just a brief backstory which I've been talking to Joe I just now met you he right. said that you found this car in Texas in 1981. No, actually it was uh, 82. 82, okay. Yeah, what it was is my wife likes Ferraris. And as a consequence, I, when I had the opportunity to buy her one, I did. What I didn't realize at the time is she's five feet tall and the car is just impossible for her to drive because okay. she couldn't touch the pedals. So I just brought it over here and I parked it, and there it sat. <laughs> that is oh, almost the exact same story on the Arbergine 73 911 we picked up. The guy's wife loved Porsches, yeah. bought it for her birthday, brought it home, she couldn't drive it. Yeah. So it sat there for 35 years. That's pretty much the same story. Uh, in my office I've got a picture of a, a Ferrari Lusso, which, oh, beautiful. oh it's a beautiful car, I wish this were that. Yeah. <laughs> this is a... I, I was told it was a 64 GTE serial number 4055. Okay. And here it sat. I bought it as a Christmas present for her in December of 1982. Okay. We uh, flew over to Houston to pick it up. Uh, Ferrari of Houston handled the transaction. And so we handed them the money got in the car, drove out, made it about a mile, and it ran out of gas. <laughs> Beyond angry is what we both were. I told Ferrari of Houston, I said, what the hell have you done to me? They sent a mechanic over with some gas, we gassed it up, drove it from Houston back here to Lafayette, about 235 miles. And uh, 
then I, we got back over here and tried to drive it. She could. She was about that short from the pedals. Wow. So I put, tried to put pedal extensions on it. Went to a shop here, and you'll see. The, I put shafts and moved the pedals, and even then she still couldn't drive it. Okay. So here it sits. Back in the day when you bought it, uh, did y'all have the discussion whether it's got the original engine in it or not? Uh, was, was that checked in the day? No, no. Okay. No, the total amount that uh, I drove it myself is probably less than 500 miles. In fact, it may be less than 200 miles. No, 500 is probably realistic. I drove it from Houston. Uh, we drove it to Baton Rouge. Uh, I drove it around here maybe a month. And there it sat. So 41 years. Can we go see it? Sure. Dying to see it. That's why Kelsey's here. She likes Ferraris. My dog's <laughs> name is Enzo, so. Oh, wow. <laughs> I like the Ferrari thing. I believe. <laughs> How's that yes. for a Ferrari girl? That's something. Yeah. <laughs> you ready, Alex? Ready. You ready, Kelsey? He's got flashlights. Heck yeah. You ready, Zach? Always. Got my monster flashlight right flashlight here. Flashlight man. Well, I'll tell you what, it may be easier to go in through the door there rather okay. than try to walk across the line. Let's do that. We'll follow you, sir. Yeah. Why do we have see, one of these? We need some. We need some. It's all been sitting for a while. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, this place is nothing but a storehouse. It hasn't been for some years. It's always nice to have a storage place. Yeah, it's 4,500 square feet or so. You wanted a Honda, right, Zach? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are looking for a Civic project, Zach. It's about Santa project. <laughs> Unbreakable, right? Yeah, just come around this way. I'm amazed at the way it's the car. MGBGT right in front of you, Zach. Yeah, yeah I bought cool. that in uh, 68. You bought it in 78? No, 68. 68? Wow. It's a 67 it's GT. There you go. I oh, love lots of MGs. There it is. The interior looks good. Do you do you know anything about the history of the car? Like, no. is, is this the original color? Uh, honestly, I do not know. Okay. All right. All right, Alex. Do you remember where the chassis number is on these cars? Well, we got this tag here. Yeah, the tag's there, so your chassis number is up by the steering box on top of the rail, very similar to the 330s you've looked at. And that's and what you're looking for is 4055. That's actually pretty neat. The chassis number has never been checked on this car. And then he, So that'll take a minute. But. So this is a little bit easier number to check here. Isn't that... Read me the chassis number. Is it 4055? 4055. Okay. So this engine number is 420... Looks like nine, so the motor's been changed. Um, and also your date code is on the motor over here. This has got a nine six of sixty-two, which is possible for a sixty-three. Yeah. So this, this car's a sixty-three. These cars were built from sixty to sixty-three. Oh, okay. And they built about one a day. Oh. So there was nine hundred and fifty-ish of these cars built. Um, unless I'm reading this number wrong. Yeah. It looks like the number is 4205. A 96 of 62. Okay, so given that, we definitely need to check the chassis in the rocks. Yeah. What are you looking at up there? So, what I'm looking at up here, Kelsey, is the there's body numbers all over the car that are pin and farina numbers, mm -hmm. but they don't actually, they don't correspond to the chassis number. Okay. But if you want to know if the body numbers are correct, you can walk around the car. The easiest number to read is this one right here on the latch. See that number right there? Mm -hmm. That's going to be your body number. 
And then also as you pull, even on the door panels, all that stuff, they're written on there in chalk. That body? This number right that, here. That number is But that's, your, that's, your, that's just your body number from Pen and Farina. It doesn't directly correlate to that that's chassis right. number. And this one looks like, looks like 342 is the body number. But again, it doesn't directly correlate to that plate over there. There's also underneath the number you're looking for, Alex, mm -hmm. it could be an IMG number or an IMO number. We don't necessarily need that. We just need to see the 4055. 4055. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Make sure my eyes aren't playing tricks on me. It's neat. This number hasn't been checked either, so there would not be no reason why anybody would know that this wasn't the right motor. When I popped the hood, it looked like... But you can clearly see right here that it is 4205. And what's cool is he's had date codes below them, Kels. Mm -hmm. And you can clearly see right there, 962E, which is a GTE motor. So it's a correct motor, but likely not the correct motor for this car. So to walk up on a 12-cylinder car and see one that nobody's ever cleaned the number is yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> you were the first guy to do it. Really nice data tag. Doesn't look like it's repop. Uh, another thing, it doesn't look like it's been clipped in the front either, Alex. It looks reasonably good. I'm not, we're not even going to attempt to turn this thing over. <laughs> as long as it's been sitting. So, 1982 Texas inspection. Exactly like Mr. Winkler said. Let's just take a quick look at the inside. She still could drive it. Keys are in it, which I love. Um, another thing that's telltale sign, Alex, if you want to know, a lot of these cars have been color changed. Okay, so you know, and then you've got the texture on the dash. Right. The texture on the dash was done after the car was painted. Okay. So there's a, see where, there's a, usually a wear spot where the keys are, where you turn them on and off. Yeah. That's where you want to look to see what color the car was. Okay. Look in there. Blue. Dark blue. It's blue. I'm not a fan of red, but I absolutely love blue cars with red interior. It's so cool. I think it's a great color combo. Uh, then the other thing, I'm not going to say I'm concerned about it, I want to check out. These cars are really, really rust prone in the rockers. Mm -hmm. So I want you to look at the rockers and the outriggers like we do on the Austin Healy's. I want to see just how bad this is here. Or how good it is. Kelsey, you can also see this trim inside here that's blue in front of the dash. See how that's blue? That's generally not changed when somebody color changes one because you got to take everything apart. So I'm going to, even though I don't have the records of history of this car, I am a believer that this is a blue on red car. Is it solid us? Uh, just a little bit of rust. But not bad rust? Yeah, not bad. Okay. You see the drain, the drain that I'm holding clean right there. That's cool. Uh, Dad. Did you find some? A little bit. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's primer. Underneath the yeah, paint is yeah, the that's primer. The, that's the primer. So that's okay. We're not concerned about that. You see how this is all cracked? Mm -hmm. It's actually good because the lacquer it means it's original paint could be original paint because the original lacquer paint shrunk up, and now this car has been in the heat in Texas and back and forth. You see how it's all cracked everywhere? Mm -hmm. That's actually a good sign. Uh, I doubt it's original paint because it's actually so good on top, but it could be because it's lacquer cracking heavy like that. The other thing that's unusual about this car is it's got 94,000 kilometers, uh, which is what, roughly 60 miles. 60,000 60, 60, miles. Yeah. Uh, Another neat telltale sign on these cars is generally the carpet in the trunk was the color of the car. That's neat that it's got blue carpet in it. Is that Kels? Mm -hmm. Not the color of the interior, but the color of the car. That's interesting. Not like the Corniche. <laughs> it's got the jack is here. Do you have the spare, Mr. Winkler? Uh, no, I guess I don't. I don't. You know what's crazy, Alex, is we have one Barani. Yep. You remember? Yeah. <laughs> I 
screw that. We it. actually have a spare for this car. This is well, Joe and Mr. Winkle, the car is what you described. Uh, I don't think it's the original engine. Are we going to go ahead and pay what we discussed on the phone? Yeah, sure. Um, maybe there's a backstory for maybe it's a warranty motor. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but it's very, very close in serial number. Yeah. Very, very close. Possibly a misstamp. But now all we got to do is I've got to pay Mr. Winkler, and then you got to figure out how to get out of here. Yep. What do you think, Kels? I, got, I think Alex can do it. Okay. <laughs> I, have, I have dollies. You have dollies? All right. We four, might need them. Four real dollies. <laughs> Doing a great job, Dad. Thank you. <laughs> so there's a CJ3B out there. Great. But I try to stick to we don't buy Jeeps holders in 1976. No, we do not. <laughs> See those motocross bikes right there, Zach? I want to buy those, but Kelsey told me no. I say yes. I say we need to buy those. Because you never know. I think you should. Now I see whose fault it is. It's your fault, the man behind the camera. Yeah, buy it, Dennis, buy it. I know what this is, I just can't remember. It was an all chrome bike made in the early 80s. I just don't remember the name of it. It'll come to me. That was heavy in the box. Yeah. Crazy construction. Made out of recycled aluminum. We were worried about that in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yeah, the, the I'm proud that we have an air compressor, a jack, and a spare tire. And flashlights. And flashlights. And Dennis has gloves. We're like professionals or something. That's some really good driving right there. I was actually driving. Oh, okay. Working smart or hard or what? And then when I you get it close, like you want to put a whole bunch of air in it. Yeah. So how many years did it take us to actually get prepared properly, Alex? Five? Five or six. <laughs> I got a flashlight. I'm probably already lost it. No, I got it. Still got my flashlight. Wow. We can't take credit for the flashlight. I'm going to make it all the way through the day. So next question, let's see how prepared you actually are. Okay. Did you bring the stuff for when a wood steering wheel delaminates? Brought something, yes. I will be impressed. Your side next. Hey, look, Alex, I got a rocking chair over here. I can just rock and fill a tire at the same time. <laughs> this is how you do it when you're almost 100. Well, I think the problem is I'm so comfortable in this rocking chair, it's going to take me too long. So I'm going to be forced to get out of it. That's no fun. Well, the fronts are the most important because these pants sit pretty low, remember? Yeah. And then the rear is The exhaust is low, too. Yeah. Because it's still got pressure. So once the pressure gets low on that, then you turn it on and it'll. How, it. how does that song go? Under pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Under pressure. So we've got our regular ramps, but we also brought these race ramps so we can extend it way out because the exhaust system on these cars are historically low, and the oil pan sit really low. We don't want to damage it. Plus, I like these because they're super lightweight. Super smooth. Wallace. This is why we always go with the longest winch cable possible. So when the steering wheel, Zach will get in there and show you, they delaminate and we don't want to break the pieces off. So what we do before you ever touch the wheel is you wrap the pieces in place. When you get back to the shop, one of the first things that will happen is we'll take that wheel out. We get some humidity in it, let it dry in place, then we'll release it, put glue in it, tape it back, let it sit for a couple of days, then we'll sand it lightly clear it, polish it, and we're done. But we don't want to lose one of these wood pieces. It's important.
going to do next we do this every time we ask them if there's any spare parts left in the car. Yep. He said yes, the original exhaust system's in there. Yep. So we're going to go back there, but let's also look and see if we can find a toolkit or a spare wheel. Yep. Okay? Toolkit would be cool. That would be cool. Go grab my gloves. Ah, so it's on that back wall? Yep. Oh. Look at that. I love it. We'll just slide it in the car and strap it down. I was thinking about we just cut it here. And no. <laughs> That's going back on the car actually. How cool is that? So Joe's all the way back there in the corner, checking the exhaust, and he said there's a tire over here. Uh -huh. Oh, here comes the other half of the exhaust. And it actually looks to be in good shape. This one looks better. Nice. Look at that. Very cool piece. That is really amazing. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, we got the exhaust. It's in really good shape. That's definitely going back on the car. Now we're on the hunt for the toolkit and a spare. Look at that spy. That's the spare. Verani wire wheel. You can't beat that. That's awesome to get that with the car. Now, the only thing we don't have, Joe, is a toolkit. But Mr. Winkle, he thinks, he said he, he doesn't think he ever had it. So all I gotta do is get this out of here. Should I play Jenga or just rip it out? Rip it out. These don't actually grow on trees. We have one extra at the shop, but I'd much rather have the one that came with the car. There it is, sir. You just haven't seen it since 82. That's the truth. <laughs> here we go. Good thing these wheels are light. I'm not actually that strong. This is probably why it's not in the car. The tire's too big. So. Super smooth. We'll leave the carpet like that. going swimmingly. How many people does it take to put a spare tire that's too big for a Ferrari in a Ferrari truck? Well, I don't know, Alex. I don't know if it shut before. It latched before, but I got this in here. I have a sneaky suspicion it's too big. Okay, now I spent more time doing this. It took us to get the car on the trailer. Let's put that back in the Boom. Look at that. Okay, the spare's in. Let's hide the keys back in the ignition. We got the exhaust. No tools. Looks like we got everything, Mr. Winkler. Up here, Mr. Winkler, thank you for being a caretaker of that car since well, 1982. I appreciate your interest in it. Kelsey and I are excited to have it. So is Alex. Look at his smile. Yeah. So we have one question for both of you guys that you're from the area. Your favorite place to eat lunch. 
right? You want hamburger level? You want full meal level? What do you want? I kind of want Cajun. If you want a real Cajun meal, Don Seafood. Don Seafood. Is it in Lafayette? Oh, yeah. Don Seafood. That's on Johnson. Okay. Well, that's where we're going to head. If you guys want to meet us there, it's all me. I appreciate it. Again, thanks for being such a great caretaker of that. Well, thank you. Joe, thanks for the lead. It was really nice yeah. to meet you. Send me some more. Nice. It was fun doing it. Nice to meet you. All right. Appreciate you guys' help. Let's go to eat. Well, I need. All right. Well, alligator bang bang. Good or bad choice? Good choice. Good choice. We'll do the alligator bang bang. I've got two. All right, go, Kels. Uh, the crawfish and jalapeno hush puppies. <laughs> and the crab dip. Outstanding. Uh, any else for you guys? I think those three are pretty good to start with. Yeah. Sorry, cool, ready. Thank you. All right. We are at Steve and Pat's, aka Bond Temps in Lafayette, which this was recommended by several people. The first restaurant that Mr. Winkler and Joe recommended, we couldn't find. It happened. I'm just kidding. This was on the way to the airport. Yeah, and they weren't going to go with us. Yeah, we've got like 30 minutes. Yep. Going to have a killer lunch. So, again, this was recommended by several people. We're going to have a killer lunch. We're making the airport, get back to Dallas, and get Alex on the road. So, wait for these killer appetizers. We're crabbed in here. Awesome. Good and hot. Offer some jalapeno hush puppies. Love hush puppies. All right. This is that alligator bang bang. Outstanding. I am sober. All right, Kelsey, you're up first. This is a chicken nugget, right? No, it's alligator. Oh. I think it's a chicken nugget. Do a little chicken nugget. But it's hot. Me. Really good. Sorry, I beat you to it. Very good. Very tender. Mm -hmm. All right, jalapeno hush puppy with crab dip on it. That's a ticket, Kels. That's a holy yeah. girl hush puppy. Okay. Heck yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. Right. Want some chicken sandwich? Well, sir, the appetizers were great. Yeah, pretty yeah. good. I'm gonna give the bang, bang bang alligators my favorite. I do. But they were all pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Ooh, that looks good. Thank you. Like the four most different things we could have possibly. Uh, remind had. me what I ordered. Remind me what I ordered. Uh, Crawfish enchiladas. That's what I thought. Okay. Right. Looks hot. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very interested in these jalapeno cornbreads. Look at that. This stuff is all hot. Woo! My goal is to not burn my tongue, but let's see how this is. Woo! It's hot. We'll be back to the best bite in a couple of minutes because it's too hot. In the meantime, we're going to steal Kelsey's chips and eat some more dip. Your arms getting tired, Zach? A little bit. Still pretty hot. Remember when your mom used to blow on your food when you were a kid so you wouldn't burn your mouth? Well, we're going to have to eat all Your mom so. still does that. Kelsey's mom was a helicopter mom. She could fly an Apache with her mind. She has the right amount of hovering. That is outstanding. Wow. That was your best buy. That was great. Everybody's smiling. I, that was fantastic. I love my crawfish enchiladas. Really good. Best choice. The dip was super rich. Jalapeno hush puppies. But my favorite was the alligator bang bang. That my favorite was that got Italian. That's what we're coming back for. <laughs> so, safe travels, Alex. He's actually going to take us to the airport. Yep. Three of us can jump on the plane. Be back in Dallas tonight.
So for our update today, we've got another great European find. We did not get to go rescue this in person. It was in a garage in Connecticut for the last 40 years. 1960 Maserati 3500 GT, as in a three and a half liter car, original six cylinder. It is a super Legera, as you can see right here, which means this is an aluminum body car. The paint is stripped off of it, so you can see the condition of the body. The body is really good. The chassis is solid. It is missing motor, transmission, and a lot of the chrome. So you can either restore this car back to original, which we have all the original Maserati build documents and original Maserati certificate showing how the car left the factory, which is in Bianco with blue, which is white with blue. And these are Barani disc wheels as opposed to Barani wires. Now, I think what would be cool to do with this car would be Resto Mod. I know some of you guys are about to fall out of your chair right now, especially you European sports car lovers. But how cool would it be to take a late model Gran Turismo, which is very inexpensive at the moment, put that drivetrain and morph those two together. But what a beautiful, stunning body style. If you have any interest in this 1960 Maserati 3500 GT, there's going to be a link posted right here. Again, we didn't get to go rescue it, but we rescued it. Another cool European car that's going to be out there. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the Ferrari buy as much as we did. Again, like, tag, share, and follow. We are real close to 500,000 subscribers. We'll have a party then. See you next week.